uh, a brilliant colleague of mine, Yanis Pariologos from Kathimerini, a journalist and writer, will make his comments and the speakers have the right to reply to these comments. Yanni. Thank you very much, uh, Pablo, and thank you very much for, to the British uh, Hellenic Chamber of Commerce uh, for inviting me to this event. Uh, I'm going to make some uh, very brief comments uh, comparing uh, last year's exercise in direct democracy uh, here in Greece with uh, what's going to happen this year in the UK. Uh, it seems there's something about the, the fair, well-spoken days of early summer that uh, brings about a renewed passion for direct democracy in some uh, uh, EU leaders and uh, it may seem to some uh, rash or foolhardy to uh, stake uh, major strategic commitments of one's country on the uh, mood of the electorate on one specific day, but uh, this is what Mr. Tsipras and Mr. Cameron in their separate ways elected to do. Um, Greece's referendum uh, last year on July 5 uh, the object of which is uh, nebulous to this, to this day, uh, and the British referendum on uh, continued membership or not of the European Union uh, are similar in interesting ways, uh, and also different in interesting ways, uh, and I'll try to talk about both, but uh, the differences in particular uh, are important. Uh, uh, the differences in terms of the seriousness of the process in the two countries, I think, uh, are like day or night, or uh, for those of us here, and I think it's most of us who are well acquainted with both Greece and the UK, I would say they're as different as a, a radiant blue morning in June in the Aegean and a drizzly cold November evening in London. So, um, I'll begin with the similarities. Um, it seems to me that uh, both uh, the British Prime Minister and the Greek Prime Minister were, in a sense, forced into the choice of a referendum uh, to deal with intra-party political pressures. Mr. Cameron became leader of, of the Tory party, uh, promising and pledging to stop banging on about Europe, but of course uh, he came into power in 2010 uh, leading the most Eurosceptic parliamentary group in the modern history of the Tory party. He resisted initially the idea of the referendum, he came out against it I believe in 2011, uh, but by 2013, he had uh, changed course and had promised that in the first half of his second term, if re-elected, he would uh, hold a referendum on the, on the in and out question. So in effect, uh, uh, Mr. Cameron uh, laid the integrity of the EU and also of the UK on the line because uh, many people suspect that if it's, a, if it's a leave vote, then Scotland will hold another referendum and probably this time vote for, for independence. He laid all this on the line in order to deal with the Eurosceptic furies within the Tory party. Mr. Tsipras, uh, you know, other things equal, uh, faced a similar situation in late June last year, um, having promised uh, the moon and the stars to the Greek people uh, before the January election. He came to a point uh, where he realized that the choice was between uh, succumbing to the demands of the creditors or taking the country out of the Eurozone. On June 22nd last year, uh, he uh, made an offer of uh, an austerity package which was uh, almost 8 billion euros in size for 2015 and 2016, almost exclusively new taxes. And he thought th this was going over many of his red lines, things he, would prom he had promised he would never do. And he thought this would finally lead to a deal between Greece and its creditors and stave off a, a default. Uh, and uh, when the details of this proposal came out, the, the parliamentary party of Syriza, his, his party, uh, there was enormous unrest in it because uh, after all, th these people had been elected to end austerity, to end humiliating bailout reviews, and uh, now they were going to be called upon to vote for more of the same. So, um, in a sense, when the creditors send the proposal back on the Wednesday, uh, suddenly remembering that, uh, you know, overtaxation produces uh, uh, recessionary effects, uh, this was the last straw for, for the young Greek Prime Minister. He uh, decided to go for the referendum and to call on the Greek people to vote no. 
And this made him, again, the darling of his party and also uh, made him the object of adoration for millions of Greeks, uh, which was all wonderful. The, the minor hitch was that the, the referendum caused capital controls and a bank holiday. Uh, it led to a default on the IMF. And the no vote on the Sunday, of course, brought the country to the very brink of a, of a Eurozone exit. Uh, the other significant similarity which uh, Dennis alluded to earlier is the fact that uh, in the Greek vote, and I, I suspect in the British vote as well, the, there is a great deal of influence and strength in anti-elite and anti-EU feeling. Uh, and I think, you know, we can be... Uh, 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 we can think of this in different ways, but it's important to realize that it is a symptom of uh, the failures of the EU and of main, mainstream parties to deal with the challenges of globalization, migration, etc., and especially to deal with the, the terrible effects of the world financial crisis uh, of 2008, which we're still basically living through. Uh, but to come to the differences that I, I spoke of earlier, um, the Greek referendum was announced by the Prime Minister uh, after midnight on June 27, uh, 2015, and the vote was held on July 5. The, the deliberation period on this issue of massive importance for the future of Greece was basically eight days. Um, laws that called for a longer pre-election period were changed through legislative degree, and the Parliament was only involved in ratifying that after the fact. The question itself was extremely technical, uh, it was on the latest proposal by the creditors, which was very similar to Mr. Tsipras's own proposal. And of course, the proposal was no longer valid after June 30th, when the, the Greek program actually expired. Um, all these issues made for a very problematic uh, process, which the Council of Europe, in fact, criticized, saying it didn't meet minimum standards for a proper uh, referendum. But of course, even worse than that, for someone who takes the verdict of the people seriously, uh, is the fact that uh, the Greek Prime Minister went on to completely ignore uh, the triumphant no vote, the 61% that voted against the measures. Uh, now my personal view is that it, it was uh, uh, the salvation of Greece, the fact that he completely changed his mind, but it's still the case that you know, he held a referendum, he advised people to vote uh, one way, they voted that way, and then he went a week later and brought a, a deal that was much tougher than what he had called on the people to, uh, to reject. So, uh, in many ways, this referendum in Greece was a travesty, but a travesty with uh, terrible economic consequences and a, also a, a bitter legacy of division sown uh, by the government itself. Um, the Brits have done things uh, quite a bit differently. Uh, as, as I mentioned earlier, the referendum was announced as early as January 2013. Uh, the precise date was set last February. Uh, everyone, both camps had time to, you know, the question was uh, clear and, and even-handed. Uh, both camps had time to, uh, you know, prepare, set up dedicated websites. There were public and television debates. Uh, and of course, uh, Mr. Cameron, unlike Mr. Tsipras, does not have leeway to ignore the the result. In fact, according to some interpretations, a no vote, uh, a leave vote, will count as effective notification under Article 2, uh, uh, Clause 2 of Article 50 of the Lisbon Treaty, uh, which governs the withdrawal of a member state. Uh, so, Mr. Cameron cannot turn a no into a yes like Mr. Tsipras did. On a final note, and, and uh, I'll be very brief about this because Simon spoke about this, uh, Last year, there was a curious alliance between the leftist government of Greece and the Eurosceptic right in the UK, and you had people as politically antonymous as Norman Lamont and Yanis Varoufakis uh, coming together under the banner of uh, defending sovereignty and, and fighting the tyranny of Brussels. Uh, you know, a, a less friendly observer would probably say that uh, the Eurosceptic right in the UK was not that concerned about the democratic rights of Greeks, but much more concerned to use the Greek crisis as a stick with which to beat the EU. But I think it's an interesting case of the kind of strange bedfellows that the long and painful EU crisis uh, has uh, fostered upon us. And uh, I think I'll leave it at that. <laughs>